hate spider mites. Hi everyone, my name is Florence and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be chatting about spider mites and how to prevent them, how to get rid of them and just everything that you can do to absolutely annihilate them. So I've been away for two and a half weeks so nobody's been watering my plants really. My partner was here for the last couple of days but to be honest it's so difficult to tell at the moment especially when the seasons are changing what to tell him to do and how much water to give certain things. And as a result, my philodendron varicosum was severely underwatered and ha now has spider mites. Um, as you can see, this is close to other plants as well, so I want to get this done as quickly as possible. And the only time I've ever suffered from spider mites is through underwatering. It's pretty easy to spot, to be honest, um, especially in the case of the varicosum. And I'll do some close up shots now so that I can show you what I'm talking about. There's extreme discoloration that looks either like it's overwatering, underwatering, or it's not being fed. You can see this kind of mottling on the leaves, which is where they're living and where they're eating and where the little bugs are. And there's webbing as well on the leaves. So spider mites can't actually fly, so it's really important to check the other plants near, especially if you're like me and you cram all your plants in. But I'm gonna crack straight on with how you treat spider mites. So first off, you need to check your plant, cut off any damaged leaves that have gone beyond repair, anything that is really badly discolored, really mottled, dying off, that you're gonna lose anyway. I was quite cautious in what I was cutting off on this ferrocasum because I didn't want a super bare plant. I might have to go back and chop more. So I'm gonna work through this with you quickly here. I've got SB Invigorator in a spray bottle. I'll put that on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. That is diluted in lukewarm water. And I've also got a dry cloth here. It's very soft, but because it's dry, it'll be able to pick up things a bit better than it would if it gets too wet. Um, a really important thing before I start as well is that it's really important not to shower this down before you do your treatment. The webbing of spider mites is actually waterproof so it won't break down at all and it'll prevent this spray from sticking and treating every part of the leaf. So yeah, let's get on with it. So all I'm gonna do is I'm spraying the front and I wipe that down in the direction that the veins are facing. You can be quite tough, but make sure to support the plant or support the leaves behind with your hand. And I'll do the front of the leaves before I do the back of them, because that way I know that I've done every single leaf and then I can work my way down. So what spider mites love to do is they love to kind of lay and sit in the folds where the veins are, so that's why it's important to have a dry cloth. Um, you'll actually find that the eggs are on the back of the leaves and you can see them, I'll insert some footage now where the leaves are chopped off that you can see. That's all the front, now it's time to do the back of the leaves. It's really important between where the petiole meets the leaf, the base of the leaf, there does tend to be some webbing with bad cases of spider mite. So really concentrate in there and on the back of the leaves. I will just show you that orange stuff is all gross spider mite stuff. So that is just what you can't see on the leaf. So that's why it's so important to wipe everything down because they're everywhere on your plant probably. I hate to tell you, but you can come back from it and yeah, as long as the plant's not inadvertently dying, it should be fine. So all you're doing by doing this 
is just disturbing where they've laid their eggs, wiping off as much as you can with the webbing to get rid of their eggs, and basically just making sure that they aren't happy to either die from SB Invigorator or don't come back. Spider mites don't actually fly and they don't live in the soil either so they'll have either blown in from outside or you know it's just when a plant is under a lot of stress that it tends to get spider mites. Right so I hope you can see that, that is so disgusting and that is all spider mite goo and poo and eggs and webs and whatever else. Now what I will do is I will leave this to dry, I'm going to spray the pole before I leave this. Um, obviously there's new leaves unfurling all over this plant and for that reason I might have to do one or two more treatments as those unfurl just in case any have got kind of in between all the little cracks and crevices and then obviously because spider mites don't fly they shouldn't spread to another plant. I will just spray the closest plants that sit next to this with Resolver spray and I'll film me doing that as well so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but I found that SB Invigorator works best for this um, when you actually have spider mites. And they tend to live on the leaf and not in the soil. I will just scrape out the top half centimetre, centimetre of soil just in case any have dropped in there and can crawl their way back up. Uh, I think that's me being overly kind of cautious but it's what I do and yeah just a couple of treatments of this and a really bad infestation you should be fine just make sure to get into all of the cracks and crevices. So I'm just going to spray the pole quickly now. Right, that pole's all sprayed and now I will let it dry. I prefer to use a cloth just because I think the brushes are too hard and can damage a lot of the foliage and you can really see what you're actually picking up that way as well. Like I said, I will be doing a varicose and care video soon. I know that this looks actually a little bit rapey, but like I said, that's because I've been away for two and a half weeks and nobody's been here to water it, hence the spider mites and yeah, hopefully it'll come back from this and it should all be fine. Right, so now this one is completely dry, I'm going to shower this off with lukewarm water again. The reason that I do this is just so that any spider mites that I've missed but have been killed can all run off and go down the drain and just go back into the hell that they came from. Um, also, I find that if I spray the pole with SB, it makes it more difficult for roots to cling to it because it, although it's not oily, it just doesn't have the same effect, so I'm going to do that. So now that's all showered, I'm just going to let it dry. Right, now that's dry from the shower, I'm just going to spray it again with SB Invigorator. This just keeps them at bay for as long as possible. I do tend to find that I have to do one or two treatments of this, depending on how infested the plant is. Um, but once I've sprayed down one last time, I will give you an update tomorrow as to what this looks like and as to whether you can see how gleaming the plant looks or, you know, if you're interested in how this works on velvet leaves, then definitely tune in because I will show you that. Um, I tend to wait a week before checking my plant again just because between then and actually seeing spider mites you tend not to notice them. Um, obviously if there is still webbing on there I would do another treatment but as far as it goes with actually spotting them I tend to find that you'll notice things more if you wait a week rather than checking it every single day. So yeah, anyway, I'm just gonna spray this and I will see you in a second.
Okay, so I've got my micans in here, which is the closest plant to it. From what I can see, it doesn't have any spider mite damage or any spider mite webbing or eggs on the back of its leaves. So what I will do just as a cautionary measure is just use some Resolver. And this is what I stand by for mealybugs, for aphids, every sort of bug. I just prefer SB Invigorator for um, spider mites, but I find this is a really good preventative use um, spray. So what I'll do is I'll just spray it all down, make sure that everything on here is wet, including the top layer of soil. And that way I know that this is never gonna get spider mites. Okay, so now that that's all sprayed down, I am just gonna leave that completely just to dry. I won't shower it off or anything. <coughs> Make sure not to breathe this in and you should really wear gloves when you're using this spray and the SB. But once this is all dry, I can put this back exactly where it is and that spray doesn't actually affect the velvet foliage at all, which is really good. This is the varicosum on the next day. As you can see, there's no eggs or webbing left on this. Like I said though, I might need to retreat this again in a week and give it a good thorough treatment again. But for now, that is how I handle spider mites. It's good to keep an eye on the plants around it for the next few weeks as well. And the ways that I prevent spider mites from happening are increasing my humidity, making sure that the watering is regular and that the plant doesn't go into stress making sure that my plants aren't touching too much. Obviously, with this many plants crammed in a one-bed flat, it's quite difficult. I really hope you found this video useful. If you did, let me know in the comments. And if you've used this treatment and it's worked for you, also let me know, please, because I'd be really interested to see how other people get on with this. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.